how we uh, go about this proper finishing using this uh, pony wall on top of the concrete wall. We'll go right up to the top plate here now and show what some of the most important things happen to be. One of them being air, air movement between the joists out behind the insulation that you can see here. In this particular case, this home dates itself because the craft paper with the moisture barrier on the back goes back well into the 70s. Now dealing with the concrete wall first, I want to prepare it for the poly vapor seal. Now the poly vapor seal must be applied six inches above grade. Now the grade level outside the home is your flower garden or it could be the grassy area. We want to be above that with any poly vapor seal because we don't want any moisture at any time to be able to wick through that concrete wall, get into the insulation or the wood fabric of the wall. The acoustic sealant will receive the polyethylene. Now the polyethylene, polyethylene as it comes up into place, it adheres to the acoustic sealant and they're compatible. They uh, are made for one another for this particular purpose and also to seal moisture out. Take the kitchen garbage can liners. This is the white plastic bag. Put in a piece of insulation that's going to be adequate to fill in between the joists. Fold it over and duct tape it. Then slice the back of the bag because that's for air movement in the event if there's any moisture that was entrapped in the bag at any time. On the back side or the inside uh, surface of the plastic bag now, it's nice and smooth, all ready to go up and be installed between the joists up against the ribbon into the bed of acoustic sealant. Now that I've got the wall sections uh, all ready to go into place, I have one sitting now all plumbed and blocked at the bottom. Now using a two by four block at the underside of the bottom plate allows the whole wall to be, uh, well, actually pressured into place by wedging. Always make sure you cut them at least an inch and a half short when you're making them and also make sure that the width is not greater than what you can get around all those angles uh, coming down into the basement area. Now when they're into place and plumbed as I have here, I'm going to screw these into the underside of the joist. And then down at the bottom all we'll require to do is put a nail down through the bottom plate, through the block and into the concrete. Now that we have some of the insulation installed, let me show you what's taking place. First of all, the vapor seal that we originally put on the concrete has went back down in behind the stud wall and wrapped around and come back up over the insulation that we've installed in between the studs. Now in behind, what we've done, we've laid bats on their side on top of the concrete wall up against the wood structured pony wall. And as you can see, the old insulation that was there already, we have sliced the vapor seal because that way, when the uh, vapor seal comes back up over top of the finished inside wall, we don't want to have two vapor barriers, only one. Now here's where the polyethylene vapor seals come down under the wall, up and terminated at this point. Now we've added vapor barrier to the top of the plate. We've sealed it in with acoustic sealant caulking, down and overlapped one foot. Also put the sealant to seal that seam, that way giving it a good tight vapor seal. Now all we have to do to finish this wall off is staple it and always staple right at the point of the acoustic sealant as you can see here. That way it squeezes nice and tight and it seals it at the point of where the staple is.